Welcome back to Our Community. Susie Thomas visiting with Kara Vogt from Fathers, that is Families Against the Heroin Epidemic Rally in Stark. Um, really fun family day, motorcycle, or whatever you would like to drive day on Saturday, June 16th, 2018, starting out at your Maslin Stadium Park is where you Correct. begin and end up at the um, fairgrounds, Stark County Fairgrounds. Yes, and the event, the community event at the Stark County Fairgrounds, that opens up to the general public at 4 o'clock. Now, you said something, and I want to back up and make sure I heard correctly. You are going to be raffling off a motorcycle? That is correct. Wow. Um, we do this every year. Uh, we have been very fortunate this year that the Stark County Sheriff's Office has given us the opportunity to raffle a seized bike for them. Um, the proceeds from that bike will be divided, um, I believe, between Fathers, the Stop Heroin from Killing Committee, and the Sheriff's Department. Do you know what kind of bike yet? It is a 1995 Heritage Softail Nostalgic. It has about uh, 13... 1,500 miles on it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm told that this is a very desirable bike. I can tell you it's a very pretty bike. That's mm -hmm. about what I know about motorcycles. <laughs> um, the tickets are $5 a piece or wow. five tickets for $20. And those will be available anywhere you find Fathers, which will be at bike nights at Quaker Steak and Lou, mm -hmm. bike nights at um, Bears Power Sports. We'll be out at First Fridays all summer. We'll be at a number of festivals around um, the bike will actually be given away at the Quest Recovery Picnic, which I believe is on September 15th this year. But okay. So you have all I don't have that date. Be, can confirmed. you register more than once? How many? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. you can buy as many tickets as you like. Mm -hmm. And they are available online on our website as well, which is www.fathersrunstark.com. Fathersrunstark.com. Okay, I'm going to absolutely want to be registering for that. Um, really fun community event. Once you're back at the Stark County Fairgrounds, uh, everybody's going to be in by 4.30. Uh, it begins to be open to the public at 4 o'clock for only $5. What all can we expect to see there? Well, we will have um, a resource fair. I uh, don't have a whole lot of that confirmed yet because it's a little bit far out yet. But mm -hmm. last year we had... More than 30 resource providers from Stark County, uh, treatment providers, health departments, uh, faith-based recovery support groups, you know, things like Naranon and NA and those mm -hmm. types of things. So a lot of different types of support services were represented. So we're hoping to have as good a turnout for that this year. Mm -hmm. And some motorcycle organizations, of course. Of course. Uh, we have our... Friends from Mr. Trick playing for us. Uh, they've been with us from the beginning as well. They play so live every music. year. Live music. Mm -hmm. They donate their time. Um, we will have a couple of acts from Rock and Recovery playing for us as well. And I believe the Warrior Beat is going to be doing a, a set for us too. They are the... Um, Drum Circle from Veterans in Recovery. I'm very intrigued so. by the name Rock and Recovery. Who are these musicians? They are basically people in recovery. Um, rock and Recovery, is, as I understand it, is kind of a d division of the Summit mm -hmm. FM. Um, so they basically promote recovery through music. How cool. And, and their performers are generally people who are in recovery. Mm -hmm. So I believe we're going to have uh, two performers um, doing sets from there. And then you mentioned veterans as well? Um, yeah, the Warrior Beat is a drum circle for veterans. Uh, many of them are part of the Veterans in Recovery group, mm -hmm. which is a substance abuse support group through ComQuest for veterans. Mm -hmm. I don't believe the Warrior Beat is exclusively from that group, but it is a lot of veterans. This might so be, we like to we like to represent the veterans as well. Absolutely, uh, this might be a little bit out of your wheelhouse. Mm. Just let me know if it I is. It could but, be. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, are we finding you know post traumatic stress disorder uh, would certainly be one of the things that would people would self medicate mm. to try and get through. Um, people, so many 
people we hear become addicts after just being prescribed some prescription medicine and taking what they were prescribed to take and becoming dependent upon it. Um, are, are we finding that we're able to help these people that have, have become addicts not because they have chosen to be? I think the the recovery process, I think, really doesn't depend a whole lot on how you got started Mm -hmm. as much as it does how much you want to be done with it. Mm -hmm. Um, There is definitely a big prescription drug factor in this problem. Absolutely. And there was um, an event that the library did a couple weeks ago. They had Sam Quinones came down and spoke about his book, Dreamland. Mm -hmm. If you're really interested in in the the roots of this problem and where it got started, that's a good place to start. Um, But it essentially, in his research, he determined that the problem really... The roots really go back to the early 90s and that whole shift in pain management. Yes. Um, Stay ahead of the pain. Yes, stay ahead of the pain. Mm -hmm. Whatever's wrong with you, let's evaluate your pain and Mm -hmm. make sure that we're prescribing something for your pain. Mm -hmm. And there's a good chance that there was potentially some deceitful practices in the pharmaceutical industry as far as what they were calling addictive and what they weren't. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it seems like, okay, we know more now. Yes. And I think as far as overprescribing and things like that, doctors are really on board because they, they want to do no harm. They signed a, an oath to do no harm, um, to get on board and not overprescribe. And, and people, I think, are more aware, taking more charge of their own health. And and if you ask, do I really need to take these for two weeks well, exactly. You know, because it, two weeks can make me want to take them that third week. And that was the, a big part of the problem where maybe you need narcotics for three to five days after yeah. a major surgery. And yeah. they're sending people home with 30 days and a refill. And that's yeah. just crazy. And, then and it, I do think the part of the issue is getting the public educated about taking charge of your own medical care as yes, well. Yes. Ask the questions. Find out what your options are. Um, there's a group of chiropractors who are involved in the opiate task force as well. Um, so there's, there's a focus there on what are alternative therapies for long-term pain management, mm-hmm. which is another important piece of the puzzle as Absolutely. well. So you when I say Stark everything. County is is on all fronts, we really truly are on all fronts. I'm so proud of us. I am. This is just <laughs> it, really, we, we take care of our own here. Yes. And this is, I, I tell people a lot, if I had to go through this problem, I'm glad it was here yes. and not somewhere else. Yes. Also, great day coming up. I don't have any information on it. Maybe you do. <laughs> but to, to turn in those leftover prescription drugs. Um, and if you're wondering, I'm sure you can call, you know, go online, Google something about Stark County Prescription Drug Give Back Day or something like they that. They do a take back day. Um, I don't, I think it was in the Fall. Okay, well, but find out when that is. But I know we they do, do that. it every year. Mm-hmm. Um, generally, Stark Mar uh, sponsors yes. that. But you can turn in prescription drugs any day of the week at uh, just about any police station in Stark County. Good to know. Um, the Stark Mar website has a list of drop box locations. Um, StarkHeroinEpidemic.org has a list of prescription drop off locations. And there are also some options available for um, home disposal as well, which Starkmar had some um, kind of, it's a charcoal, activated charcoal bag that literally deactivates the medication as soon as you put it in this bag and then it can be thrown in the trash. Man, that's amazing. So, So, and then you can throw it right in your own trash. I believe so. Don't quote me on that 100%, but but I'm pretty sure, but yes, Starkmar does have options Mm -hmm. 
At one point, they had quite a few of those available. So, And that's Stark, S-T-A-R-K-M-H-A-R, Mental Health Correct. and Recovery. Um, double check that because, yeah, clean out our cupboards. If Once you're done with something, get rid of the medicine for it. Do not hang on to it. Exactly. You've got something else very cool we do not want to miss, a kids program that's taking place. Let's talk about that. Okay. Well, we we like our acronyms here at Fathers. So KIDS is (laughs) Kids Initiative to Develop Serenity. It is a monthly day camp, um, family support, prevention education, and fun and fellowship day for children 8 to 13, who have been affected by a close family member's addiction. Mm. Uh, Right now, we have seven children in the program. We've had two of our day camps so far. Our next one coming up is May 19th at the Maslin Rec Center. And we'll be spending a couple of hours um, in their awesome aquatic center. And we run this program in conjunction with ComQuest. Uh, We have their school-based Prevention staff that come out and do some educational teaching games and activities. We do crafts that work on coping skills, Mm -hmm. um, which all sounds terribly boring, but I promise you it's not. I'm sure they have fun. Uh, We do. We have a great time. You know, this past one, we threw balls at the wall to um, release our anger. Um, We made some slime. Uh, We did some coloring and journaling activities. We've Mm -hmm. done some breathing exercises with blowing bubbles. We've made uh, sensory jars. So we we have a really good time, and we went fishing this last trip. Nice. We didn't catch anything, but we had a nice day out at Sippo (laughs) sitting on the dock and getting our bait stolen. Yeah, getting Uh, fish is only You know, making friends. So we have the school-based professionals that run the what I call the curriculum, even though I don't really like that word because it's too schooly. But but you put together a real curriculum. Yeah, didn't but there you? really there is mm-hmm. a curriculum. It is based on a SAMHSA approved curriculum. Um, SAMHSA? That's the What's Substance SAMHSA? Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration mm-hmm. on the national level, and we also have a clinical counselor on hand uh, during the afternoon in case the kids need it case the family members want to talk to the counselor about something. Um, So that option is available. Um, We've done, so far, we've worked on issues surrounding the sadness that you feel when you have a family member in addiction. Um, Some of the things that the kids have wanted to talk about. Um, We have three who have lost parents in the program, so they Um, One in particular really was just so hungry to talk about the things that have happened to him and how he's trying to cope with them. Mm -hmm. Um, We've addressed issues such as, does anyone love me? Um, Why can't my family be together? It's hard not to be with your family when other people are with their families. Um, We kind of scratched the surface of some anger issues at the last one. Uh, We're going to delve a little bit more deeply into that in the next session. Um, We did a skit which kind of showed how addiction grabs hold of a person and the, the struggle between the person and the addiction. And these kids really wanted to punch addiction yeah. and kick addiction and yeah. when that didn't work they they wanted to kick it harder so yeah. we've got some work to do yeah they did not sign that. up for this did they, they did not sign up for yeah it. um wow it's awesome what mm-hmm. you're doing where can people get more information on that program um, that Kara. program is also on fathersrunstark.com okay. there is um an entire page for that which has the brochure which details the program it has a list of the locations that we are having the programs the dates what the activities are going to be and there's a a registration button you can register right from the website and if you don't have internet access you can also just call me at 330-232-4111 let's do that one more time 330-232-4111 one one. Um, that's the father's number, so that's also good for any questions about the motorcycle run. 
um, and, you know, questions about the kids program, or I can sign you up over the phone, too. FathersRunStark.com. Kara Vogt, thank you so much for what you and your husband are doing for our community. Well, Susie, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk about it. <laughs>